You cannot begin to fathom how shocked I was. When I went to Anime North, and at one of the game tables, I saw multiple copies of this lying around. I played the hell out of this game when I was a kid. And, okay, it's Jumping Flash, and it's about, well, here, listen. Baron Aloha, a black shadow threatening the safety of peaceful worlds. An evil scientist who frightens children and is bent on slavery. A giant robot has seized a peaceful world and carried it off. Aloha's evil plan is to turn it into a huge private retreat for himself. Universal City Hall, here to help the people. Robert can do the job. Let's go, Robert. Jump and go! Did you get all that? Well, good, because we're about to start playing Jumping Flash. A game that I first discovered thanks to a PlayStation demo disc around the time that the system came out. This game was released in 1995, so it was incredibly early in the PlayStation's lifespan. This was also one of the first 3D platforms I played. Uh, we got a PlayStation and an N64 at the same time, so I was pretty much playing this at the same time that I was playing Mario 64. And to a certain degree, it's been heavily overshadowed by Mario 64 and other 3D platformers at the time. I think this is a really underrated game. So, now to the actual game itself. What you have to do is go around to all these different sort of island places. You can fall off the edge of these things, so they're pretty much floating islands. And they somehow have clouds and blue skies in deep space. I'm not sure how that works either. Anyway, you have to break off these islands and return them to the crater planet where they were stolen. And you have to do this by collecting the jet pods that are laying around uh, each different island. These allow the lands to propel themselves away from the machinery of Baron Aloha and go back to the crater planet where they belong. And once you get all the jet pods, you have to make your way to the exit pad so that you can get off of uh, the island and proceed to the next one so you can free that one too. When you get down to it, this is an incredibly easy game to speed run, but I'm going to take my time with this and try and show you like a couple of things. The most important thing about this game is the ability to double jump, as you can see me doing here. When you do a single jump, you can move forward and then sort of strafe in midair from side to side. But when you double jump, you automatically look at the ground in addition to gaining a whole bunch of extra height. And when you turn from side to side, you don't strafe, you just look from side to side. Bonus levels like these are going to be scattered around pretty much every level in some form or another. This one has you uh, shooting balloons. And these are not particularly difficult. If you do get all of these in the time limit in the upper left, you will get uh, an extra life. On top of all the money, which... Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You can hold R1 to just stand still and look around to aim at things easier. Now, what the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, the coins just give you extra points. There's not any actual like monetary system in this game. That's what they're for. And the items that you see collecting along the left side are power-ups and weapons that you can use to help you along the way. This is incredibly early in the game, so I'm not going to really use those very much. Maybe later on in the next level, just as a demonstration. And you can see there's a radar in the upper right. That will display uh, basic enemy locations. And once you're close enough to them, it'll also display things like... I. Actually, I don't know if it'll display, like, the jet pods in the exit. I think it does, because... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does display uh, the jet pods in the exit. Now, there are a bunch of different enemies that you're going to encounter in this. You've seen, like, the frogs with the top hats. Those are, like, basically the Goombas of this game. But there's a whole bunch of different enemies, like this one, which will shoot missiles at you. Which have slight homing capabilities, but they're pretty easy to dodge. Basically, the idea of this game is, if you're standing still, you're doing it wrong. And now, where was the exit? Okay, now I know where to go. I'm getting lost in the first level. This is not a good sign. And double jump for safety. That is the moral of this game. That is what you should do everywhere in this game. Double jump for safety. Because when you can see where you're going to land, 
It's so much easier. And that is one island down. Let's go for another. And by the way, that third stage that you see up ahead, that represents a boss fight. And it's not necessarily uh, the thing that you see. That's just basically like a representation that tells you there's going to be a boss there. If I remember correctly, I think the first level is a dragon. So sort of... By the way, the lava in this level will actually hurt you, as I demonstrated there. And by the way, that dongle thing hanging from the top, I'm not sure what exactly that is. It pretty much goes off at random. Alright, now for this level, you need to do a little more intricate jumping, but again, nothing too complicated. And that spiked enemy is specifically there so you won't jump on top of the enemies like I was doing earlier. Because that's another way that you can kill them. And you can land on top of really small things like this signpost that I'm standing on right now. So you have about 10 minutes to go through each level and collect all the jet pods. And power-ups like these will really help you out. They freeze time. They don't actually freeze the timer, but they do stop all the enemies from moving around. And in the later levels, this becomes a major help. And I'm going to try and do this. Basically, what you want to do, if possible, is start from the highest jet pod and work your way down. It becomes so much easier instead of, like, grabbing one at the top, going all the way to the bottom, working your way back up. It just saves you a lot of headaches. Oh, and there are some jumps in here. Actually, I'm going to show you what the weapons do first, if I can. Let's see. Uh, I think this is a twister. And there you go. We're basically shooting fireworks. That was a twister. And I think this is the Roman candle. Yes, it is. Roman candles have homing capabilities. This jump hurts, but it does send you all the way up to the exit. Sometimes you will have to take damage to progress. That's just how it is. And this is one of those games that moves so fast, I kind of feel like I need to keep talking, even though I am very quickly running out of things to possibly say. Ah, boss fight. This one is fairly simple, if it's what I remember it being. Is it? Yes, it's the dragon. This boss fight is, even by first boss fight standards, incredibly easy. That's his only attack, is the flame breath. And he actually spends most of his fights standing still like this, which makes him very easy to hit with any power-ups that you have. You see that uh, power-up that I used in, co in tandem with my fire drained about a third of its health. It it'll stand still, shoot fire, then fly around and shoot fire. Basically, the worst thing you can do in this is double jump, because that'll cause you to look at the ground instead of him. So what you can do is just single jump and move from side to side, and you will never get hit by his fire. Unless you're doing it wrong like me, uh, like I did earlier. You can also use these stone pillars to block his fire attacks, and then just jump out and shoot him some more. Nothing too complex with this boss, but that'll change. All right. And with that, we have cleared the first set of stages for Jumping Flash. And I am spent. Next time, we will go on to World 2, which, if I recall correctly, is the Egyptian level. Actually, we'll see right now. Indeed it is! The Egyptian level, which... I swear I saw an Easter Island statue. I don't know how that works. Anyway, see you next time.